everyone i hope you're all doing well welcome back to my channel in this video we are going to share a few tips and tricks that i have up my sleeve when it comes to studying now i am not someone who is a scholar i have never been a ranker and i'm not really making this video um for you know just any random purpose all i am trying to do with this video is to just share with you what i know what i have learned in the last two years um, so I'm studying nutrition and in this field, you are always and always learning and always studying. I think that's the case with most fields. You always really have to keep yourself up to date and you always have to make sure that you are really at par when it comes to science, research work, what are the latest findings, what are the doctors saying and all of these things. So I just wanted to sit down and share a few things that really help me study with passion and I have never been someone who you know graduated or who did her bachelor's or 10th standard 12th standard with a lot of um, passion when it comes to her studies i was a very average student so this by no means i'm trying to say that okay see you have to do this to be like me this is just my tips and tricks that i feel work really really well for me so when it comes to studying i think the biggest tip that i can give you You cannot study and you cannot really retain information and knowledge if you're not passionate about what you're trying to do. So let's say I think there are two scenarios. One is where I am in, where I study because I love studying and I want to study so that I'm able to help myself better. I'm able to help my clients better. But there is another scenario where you have to study because you want to graduate. You need to clear your 10th standard, 12th standard. And both of these situations are not really comparing apples to apples. But all I'm trying to say here is if you must do it and if you have to do it, you would also rather do it with passion than to just do it for the sake of it, right? You might not want to pursue whatever you are doing right now in future, but just to really get done with this, just to really make sure that whatever it is that is on your plate right now, you are able to really finish it well. My biggest tip is make sure that you study with a lot of passion, okay? That's number one. Number two is to make sure when you're studying, you have to act like you are going to teach it back to someone else and preferably someone who is not in the same field, which means they are not going to know a lot of scientific jargon. They are going to be just a basic human being who wants to understand what is type 2 diabetes, what is type 1 diabetes. When you're trying to get into the whole gist of what this particular thing means, don't just study it because, oh, I wanted to talk about diabetes, I wanted to study about diabetes, and I studied two topics, I listened to a podcast, and now I am very well versed with it. Every time you are done doing that, enact like you are going to teach it to someone else. So if I have to sit down here and if I have to teach you what I know in a simplified manner, can I do it, right? I think there is a beautiful quote that says, if you cannot teach it to a child, you probably don't understand it well enough. So again, I sh I'm sure that this does not stand true with everything available out there, but most of the times you really, really want to study in a way where you are able to teach the same thing to someone else. Number three is making sure that you are writing down things and probably you don't have to write down everything that you learn, understand, but you have to make sure that you're writing down key points, keywords, and you make sure that you are repeating it. You make sure that you are revising it. So just studying something and thinking, oh, I am pretty sure I've grasped this and I know I'm 100% going to remember it. That is going to be a huge possibility that when you don't use it often, your mind, your brain is going to be like, I probably don't need to remember it because I'm not using it. So there's no point in me putting in that effort and energy holding on to that memory. So I might as well let it go. But when you start to write it, when you start to make a habit out of it, when you start to practice it, when you start to revise it, you are just going to make it more and more ingrained in your mind. And that is how you are going to be able to retain that information for a longer period of time. So I know about follicular phase, auditory phase, luteal phase, menstrual phase, and I can talk about it in my sleep because I revise it every single day, not to study, but just to explain it to my clients, just to explain it on my Instagram or YouTube. So it's just in my head. But the first time I studied it, I couldn't remember which phase comes after which phase. Then when I started to practice, when I started to practice using the things that I've learned with the correct keywords, at least in my field, it's very important for us to remember those things. 
when I started to practice it and when I started to share this with my clients and they started to remember and understand it, it just, I just come to a place, I've just come to a place where I'm just able to retain it better because I talk about it a lot, which basically means in simple terms, if you really want to remember something and if you know that you really have to use it in long term, you want to make sure that you are repeating it, you are revising it. And that is one of the best ways to train your brain to let it know that this is important and I need to hold on to it. My tip number four is to make sure that you are not rushing things. A lot of people sort of claim that, oh, I have read five books in a month. But when you talk to them in reality, they've not implemented even one thing from the books they have learned. So you could have read 100 books or you could have read one book and one book is capable to change your life. 100, book is going to, 100 books are going to change your life in 100 different ways. But that is only going to happen when you really absorb something and you start to apply it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So this is probably not true for people who are into fictional books and who read fiction. But when it comes to, let's say, um, health, lifestyle, nutrition, uh, mental health, emotional health, when, you, when it tries to, uh, when you're trying to sort of work with these sectors, it's especially very important that you just, just don't uh, read uh, The Power of Now and then you jump to another book and then you jump to Atomic Habits and then you jump to something else and you just let it go. You know, it's all in the air. It all vanishes because like I said, go back to the last point. Your brain doesn't think that it's important to hold on to it because you don't use it. You don't need it. Why is it important? And when it is not important, your brain is not going to spend that energy in holding on to that information. So read one book in a month. Read one book in one year but make sure you are able to use it in practical ways and that is one of the best ways in which you can change yourself you can change your personality your character your attitude in general all aspects of your health just because you've not just read one book but you also implemented everything that that book had to offer you or probably some things that it had to offer you and my last tip would be to make sure that when you're going to bed and if you have learned about a topic that's supremely new, new to you and you've possibly never you know spent that kind of time in understanding this so currently for that uh, currently for me that topic is minerals minerals are something that i'm really trying to get a good hold on um it's a fairly new topic it's not really discussed in colleges it's not really taught by someone it's i'm not really doing a certain course so i'm just really relying on myself to understand these things and uh, every time i go to bed Either I'm trying to manifest something, I'm trying to pay gratitude, I'm trying to extend my prayers or I'm trying to revise what I learned in the day. So I'm just lying on the bed, my eyes are closed and I'm just trying to remember what did I learn this, you know, just today. What did I learn this morning? What did I learn in the afternoon? Do I remember it? I thought I, I'm going to be able to remember it when I was reading it. But do I really remember it now? Is it really in my head? And then I force my brain to recall it and it comes back to me. If it doesn't come back to me, I know the first thing I have to do the next morning is to open the book, see it and ingrain it back into my head. So revisions while you are going to bed is something that's supremely helpful, at least in my case. Now for a lot of people, this can give them anxiety that I don't want my brain to be hyperactive when I'm going to bed and I don't want to think about it. If you are someone like that, then I really feel that this tip is not helpful for you and you should probably go back to the other, other four tips that I just gave. But when it comes to me, I'm just able to let myself know that, okay, Ankita, what you studied today, you remember it or you don't remember it. That's it. I am not too harsh on myself. I don't kill myself to remember something. But all that I come down to is, do I really remember it or not? And if I don't, I just go back to that topic the next day and I try to retain the information back. So these are my top five tips when it comes to studying. And um, I really, really hope either one or two of them comes handy when it comes to your own studying. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you like this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers and it really makes me the happiest girl in the world. So if you've not subscribed already, please do it and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.